Hey guys, we're through Fish and Auto Channel and Reefs.com and we're here in Fort Pierce, Florida to visit my good friends at ORA because they have something very special to present to you guys. Jordan, how are you today? Fantastic, thanks for coming all the way up. Thank you, appreciate thank you for, it. Thank you for having me here. What is this special announcement that you guys have? You guys have? All right, so we're gonna show you some of the first Tragnacta Gigas clams that have been on the market for the last 10 years. 10 years. Right here in this trough. You say 10, but I mean like, I, th I feel like it has been a little longer than that. It's absolutely possible. I mean, mm -hmm. the clams trickled in and stayed around for quite some time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Got larger and larger in home people, home aquariums. But now they're back after a long dry spell. Now, why is this so unique? Like, I mean, why, why is this so rare? One of the biggest reasons is they are critically endangered in the wild. They're not readily available. You can't find them. You can't import them or collect them. So aquaculture is really the only route to getting them into our industry. You got it. And you know what's the funniest thing is that I actually before you contacted me, about a week before, I just shared a success story of, of people getting like plastic bags over these, these gigas clams, you know, like spawning. And then a week later, I had a notice, notification from Jordan saying that they got gigas clams. It's, what are the odds, huh? It was meant to be. <laughs> I guess so. So how often, are, is this gonna be a readily available kind of thing from you guys from now on? We're hoping to. This is definitely an exciting species for everybody. Public aquariums, private aquarium. It's a good animal to have here in captivity rather than have any kind of support for a wild collection of them. Gotcha. Now, how fast, I mean, this is like the largest clam in the world, right? Yes, reaching four feet. I think I read up to 700 pounds, but in captivity, obviously they can stay a lot smaller, mainly because people's conditions aren't nearly as ideal as, as, the, the, ocean. as the ocean. Right, right. So can you tell me the characteristics of this clam? Like, how is it different from the regular clams that you guys regularly offer here, like Maximus, Doristas, etc.? One of the main differences uh, is the mantle, the nice fleshy part in the middle. It doesn't always fully extend out beyond the ridges of the shell. They tend to stay a little bit more uh, contracted, uh, I noticed that. Yes. Yeah. The color pattern palette is a little bit different as well. So whereas with the Maxima, you get turquoise, bl blue, purples, the Gigas tend to be much more monochromatic, tending to stay more gold, uh, olive green, dark green, but they do have very distinct purple or blue spots on them that you won't see on any other clams. Talking about the growth of this clam before, how fast does this clam usually grow in an ideal situation occurring? It is definitely one of the more faster species of clams. Uh, I think you're gonna see it on par with a Duresa clam. Okay. So maybe in at our two inch size, mm -hmm. you can expect to have a four inch clam in the next two years. A lot of people have asked you this before. Some people are scared of getting a, a giant clams due to their ability to have a spot in their aquarium mm -hmm. because they're they're afraid that it may potentially do harm to their aquarium. How big do they have to be in order for them to be sexually mature? But I will say I think sexual maturity is going to be somewhere around 18 to 24 inches is my guess. We actually had this conversation before. We think that this one actually bulks up more before the, it gets taller. Right, so I think you're going to see your clam get a bit more mm -hmm. wider, so to speak, rather than longer uh, in any kind of speed. So if you're worried about a lot of uh, vertical space, I don't think you have to worry too much about a four foot clam all of a sudden, but uh, you will notice a decrease in your calcium and alkalinity as these guys start to thicken up their shells and move kind of more laterally. Gotcha. Now, tell me about this, how you guys had this broodstock in. So getting broodstock in can always be a challenge. So there really aren't that many uh, specimens available out in the wild to find. Poaching is a huge concern all around the Indo-Pacific. We were very fortunate enough to take a 30 hour boat ride out to a, a local island, acquire some broodstock, do some spawning, and bring some of these back into the industry again. How do you guys get them to spawn so regularly to have a regular amount of uh, stock available? Well, with any kind of livestock, uh, there's nothing reliable about it. Uh, it is a lot of rolling the dice, but some things that can trigger on a regular basis, the moon, for example, mm -hmm. uh, full moons always are really good, particularly with our trochus but you can do some things to kind of induce the spawning with certain environmental triggers. So temperature is a really good one. Martin uh, Moe actually said about that as well. Temperature, right. yeah. Raising the temperature, exposing them to low tide for an extended amount of time uh, can all, are ways of triggering a spawn. Gotcha. And then how do you guys capture those um, eggs and sperm? You basically capture it in rudimentary methods out on the, on the, on the island. You know, five gallon buckets, totes work really well. Really? And you just kind of blend it all together. You settle it out into a long tray, very similar to this. Let the sperm and eggs combine and settle out. And then 
two years later, you've got some nice clams available. Gotcha. So it looks, looks to me like this is about maybe two inches big. Yeah, these guys are about five to six, five to seven centimeters right now. Gotcha. And then in order to get that big from the, the, the eggs and sperm that we just mentioned, how, how long does it usually take? This right here, these are probably about 18 months old, maybe even a little bit younger. 18 months old, gotcha. And are these now available in the market now? Oh yes, we started shipping them out uh, Friday of last week. Uh, when do we get this clam? Where do we place these kind of clams? So a good spot to put this clam would be on your sand bed. Uh, sand bed okay. They're a very forgiving species of clam on par with your duraces in their lighting requirements. So whereas a Maxima or Crosea, you need a ton of light to right. be blasting it. These guys are a lot more, a lot more tolerant of lower light levels. Lower light That's level. not to say that they won't accept bright light. They do like as much as you can give them. Gotcha. And do they like, what about the flow range? Do they like a lot of flow? Or so I would say, flow? you know, any kind of reef conditions that are going to be a good environment for them. So they'll deal with high flow, they'll deal with low flow. And the most crucial things I think are that they are a lot easier clam to take care of than you may think. So like if you were to like, let's say from rank the clams from like Dorisa to Maxima and stuff sure. like that, where would this fall in? In hardest to maybe easiest, most forgiving species, mm -hmm. definitely Gygus and the Dorisa on the easier to maintain scale. Gotcha. Then you would have Scumosa, Maxima, and then Crosea, the more, more difficult, more challenging. So now this being the giant clam species that it is, what is the minimum tank requirement like size-wise to keep one of these clams in like? I would say a better metric for sizing would be a footprint, right? So you're gonna want something with at least a four by four footprint at an adult size for this species of clam. Uh, minimum you would probably wanna get away with would be maybe something on a four by four, oh, I just said that, a two by two at this size. Uh, so that puts you in the range of maybe a 60 gallon just to start out with. You will need to get an increasingly larger tank though as you start to put on size. Uh, you're looking at several years so you've got some time to invest in you know, a larger system. We all want that larger system. These would be a great motivator for that. Good excuse to tell wife. Yeah, oh yeah, yeah, I have to. The clam, the clam made me do it. So let's talk about a little fun fact about this clam. How long does these, these kind of clams usually leave, live in the wild? You know, there's a lot of conjecture on, on the age of these clams, uh, anywhere from the Maximus, most Draces. I would be confident saying they probably would live at least 100 years or more. I mean, really the only thing that kills these are predators or disease. And in the absence of those, I think they can essentially live for quite a long time, a surprisingly amount, long amount of time. All right, guys, once again, this is Richard of the Fish and Nautil channel and Reese.com. Jordan, thank you so much for having me in this amazing center here. I can't wait to see this and like basically flood the market. I think clam really ties the reef aquarium together. If you go in the wild, you see like, you know, all the aquapores and different types of cores, you see clams right in the middle. I think it just, it's that centerpiece that I think every aquarium definitely needs one of. It definitely adds an, a strong visual impact to any home reef aquarium. I definitely, definitely agree. I mean, as you know, I'm an avid clam lover. I have a 13 clams in my house. Right. <laughs> I think everyone should have a few clams in their aquarium or a few clam collections. There you go. There you One go. of every time. That's it. Well, thank you so much for, uh, for having me here, guys. And I hope you have a great day. Thanks so much, guys. Hey guys, it's Richard Fish on Auto Channel and Reese.com, and I am here in Canada. What city is this? <laughs> what city is this? Yeah. This is Fort Pierce, Florida. Fort Pierce, okay. City by the bay.